Hello everybody, thank you very much to watch that video tutorial. I'm super excited to show you that project because after many years I was thinking how oh, I have to teach you about the airbrush. What kind of tips I can give you to understand better how I understand to work with airbrush. So I've decided to work with that project because it's a, I think a big model from Games Workshop. It's more or less like the typical models that I usually paint, like 70 millimeters, something a bit bigger, and which models can bring me something more artistic to paint everything that I have in my mind. So how I'm going to start? The idea will be, as I like to bring you more tools, in that case, I like to bring you that kind of airbrush. So it's a Badger Patriot from US. It's famous uh, there in US. It's not super famous in Europe or at least in Spain, but it's a nice quality, I think cheap and easy to clean it. Remember that always I explain that the, for me, the most important is have an airbrush easy to clean it. Because just when you have to wash to clean the airbrush, uh, you need a lot of time doing that. So this is the reason why I like airbrush that will be easy to clean with acetone and will be perfect. So once time you have primed with the airbrush, it's time to start to paint the base coats for everything. In that case, I'm going to use my own airbrush because I love it. I control it better. The needle is dot point is uh, dot uh, two, I think, if I remember well. And the other one is uh, dot five, okay? So the difference is with this one, you can aim and paint thinner. The other one, Badger have another airbrush for details, but in that in this project, I've decided to use my own airbrush. So what kind of color I recommend you at the beginning? I recommend you for something like metallics, start with the metallics, just to don't spread out everything with the pin, paint pigments around the whole model. So the first time it's, in my opinion, paint the base coat for the metallic, then paint the rest of the colors, which one don't have metallic. I like to work in that way. And another tip that I can give you, it's once time you have finished with the pigment with that metallic, I recommend you clean it correctly. You don't have to use uh, ultrasonic cleaner or something like that. Just with alcohol, water or acetone, my favorite, if you can use it, I recommend you always. Just with that, it's enough to remove all the metallic pigments inside of your cap of the airbrush. So once time you have finished with that, it's time to paint with another colors. How I recommend you work with the base coats when you want to aim correctly with your airbrush to don't paint spiders or fix all the mistakes that you have when you paint with the airbrush. My opinion always is use a perfect dilution for that. And for sure, which one is that perfect dilution? Always thinking that you are painting not like a glaze, but not like a base coat, typically. It's more like something between both. If I have to recommend you, it will be like 70% thinner plus water and 30% painting. For me, it's better and easier paint three layers than only one and have to clean your airbrush or paint 20 layers just for the base coat. Doesn't make sense. So more or less the dilution, it's like 70% the dilution and 30% the painting. So as you can see on the video, what kind of color I recommend you for the next step? Something lighter, but never pure white, because pure white we will use later. So in that case, with an ivory, pale flesh, something with a bit of color inside will be better. And what, what is the reason why I decide to do that? The most important is have a high value near of white and with a bit warm color, because I would like to add more magentas, orange and yellow on this kind of thunder magic from this uh, Necron. So what happens if you choose that base coat for something colder? In my opinion, the result will change a bit if you're working with airbrush. If you will work with your uh, brush, don't feel stressed because if you paint with copy bases, as always I explain you, will be okay. But if you want to paint with thin layers, for sure, the previous base coat will work under that. So maybe the result doesn't look like you want. For that, I recommend you that if you will go to use uh, orange or warm colors, 
use a white color plus something warmer inside, plus, for example, orange, yellow, or maybe magenta, but I recommend you like yellow or orange plus white. So an ivory color will be perfect for that. And then it's just paint all the thunders or magic lighting that Cam came from, from his hand. And then after that, reinforce with another layer where you need, because remember, the idea is start with a black primer just for the for the metallic pigment because we'll cover perfectly will look better but then you have black primer in other places and in that case where the light you want to represent something higher or lighter or more saturated i recommend you change all that black color for something lighter how just using something with more white but never pure white remember that because once time you have painted many layers, it's time to add pure white where you want to increase the light, the value. Later, when you will paint with fluor colors, you will see that it's difficult to work with them and more if you are pa painting with your brush. So with your brush, you will see like, if you add 50-50, we look like a glaze. And if you add 70% water and 30% painting, we look like a more like a glaze just to finish the details or something like that. So be careful with that because you will need a lot of time. For that reason, if you paint two different base coats on the area where you want to represent the OSL, we look better and easier at the end. So now paint where you want to increase the highlighting. If you want a tip, I recommend you something more like random in some places. Just that. So you don't have to feel stressed about where should have more lighting. For sure on his hand, but just that. The rest of the thunders, where you want. So don't worry. Just to increase the highlighting in some places. Just that. Because we will play with different kind of orange, with more yellow or more magenta. You will see how I work. Now, just go with fluor orange. I would like to paint everything with that color. How we have to work with that? The most important is understand that we'll cover mm, really bad. So we need to increase many layers than usually we do. And then the idea where you have to start painting will be where you think that you have the shadows. So don't start painting in front of the model. Try to paint both sides of every thunder. So I'm trying to paint both sides and then the center of this. So this is the reason why you see that I started to move uh, the model. So here you can see the right side and then I will move to the other side to paint both. And then I'm going to keep the white color in the center of this. This will help me to increase the shadow and the highlighting, always talking about fluor colors. It's something difficult to understand because we need to play with the most saturated colors that we can imagine. We can't use black or darker colors. So we need to use just color. And thinking about the color theory, we will create the lights and the shadows. Always talking about the most saturated colors. So you will see the experiment and the result. Now first, paint with many layers with that fluor. As you see, just with one, it's like doing nothing. We need to increase that. We need to have a uniform color with that orange before to start with a new one. So the idea to use the airbrush, as you can see on the video, how I work with the trigger is pull back and pull front, always with an air flowing continuum without stop that. Because if you stop that, then when you will push again the trigger, you will spread out, you will paint spiders or dot in random places. So if you have to stop and push again the trigger, I recommend you go to the paper towel, push the trigger and go with the air, con uh, air flowing continue to your model. So as you see how many layers, I start to see like a perfect uniform color with that fluor. This is the result that should look just with many layers. 
only with one or two won't be possible. So you will need to add many layers. When I said many layers means maybe seven layers. You will see by yourself when you paint with fluor colors. They are fantastic color, beautiful, super saturated, but really hard to work with them. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> so it's better paint many layers when you have something like that, increase again the, the, the color to have more uniform base coats, then stop and see some white areas at the end. The idea where I've painted with that orange over that uh, silver uh, or metallic color, it's because I would like to use that orange as reflections for the highlighting. So at the same time, I'm going to play between that color for the thunders and the OSL or magic lighting on him. Remember that this is like a metallic warrior, so with a lot of reflections. So the OSL should touch with pure color on him. This is the reason why I've decided to use just pure orange. You will understand later when I'm going to use magenta, like now, to increase the shadows, talking about saturation always playing with saturation. Remember, I'm going to use something darker than color. So I think it's a nice experiment. Play with the airbrush at the beginning and try to paint all the nuances, shades, tonalities, create everything just with airbrush. This is an example to play with your airbrush, just to lose the fears, Remember, the airbrush is an interesting tool that you have to know it. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. But once time you understand how it works and you feel comfortable doing artworks with that, you will see how you improve really quick. So as you see, I'm trying to find the angle. As I explained, you always looking for the correct place to paint only the shadows for every volume and increasing there. Then, in some areas where I think that should have different kind of orange, I'm going to blend with that magenta over that. Only with that two colors, you will see how this orange looks more like red or with more shades in more places. So at the end, we look better, not like a base coat and just that. So remember that I'm working with orange and magenta only fluor colors. I'm going to paint on both sides of this uh, fire place or fire stuff only to move the highlighting to the center. So you will see how I move the next highlightings in the center of that. So only with these two colors, you see how it looks like have different shades and shadows. And now it's time to use inks. I'm going to use inks on that silver or metallic uh, color will be harder because silver is a glossy finish and we don't have pores to, to stick correctly the pigment of this ink and ink is really fluid and will be harder. So this is why I've decided to work with that because it's a perfect experiment to control the airbrush. So here you have a perfect example about the color and how to use the trigger. Now, Time to paint on the model. What places you have to paint? Remember, the idea about my painting style is thinking everything in geometrical shapes. So the whole model for me is like a cylinder. And every muscle, in that case, talking about his anatomy, it's like a, like a sphere, like a cylinder, like a cube. It's the pain of what kind of part of, the, of the, his anatomy. So the idea is trying to find and aim only on the shadows for every muscle. So start there and then move to the mid-tones to have the gradient. This is what I'm doing now. First painting with many layers because I'm painting with glazing. You see, like I'm adding more and more layers to add just different shades, tonalities, and have only with the metallic color plus inks have the anatomy done. Remember, the idea about this project is something crazy, something different. This is just to lose the fears about the airbrush and show you that you can paint 
a big model like this one, everything with airbrush. In my opinion, later you should work with, uh, with your brush and I'm going to work with my brush. But this is just an example that what kind of painting you can do with the airbrush. So check how I move the angle of the model, always looking for the shadows, always starting on the shadows and moving to the mid-tones if I need it. For sure, always I'm going to need to add gradients. So if you see, I try to add many layers with enough time, thinking what I have to add and thinking in the general idea about this project. So in some places you will see how I increase the, that color because I would like to increase the OSL effect, the magic lighting. So to increase the magic lighting, I need to increase the shadows near of that. It's something crazy because if we are talking about light, it should be lighter, right? But to increase the light in a miniature where you, we don't have a background, we have to create fake shadows to increase that highlighting. If you increase the shadow, the other lighting will look higher. If you don't have that shadows, until you use white, all the colors will look like a mid-tone. So this is the reason why, for example, near of this, orange, I increase that shadow. If you feel that you make spiders, I recommend you two different ideas. The first one is try to move flowing with the airbrush, just with air, the spider to a place where you will paint with a shadow later, just to fix it. The other thing is just stop painting, blow air, and dry the spider and then try to fix it with another mid-tone or with your brush if you need it. But don't try to paint and continue painting in the same place because if you create a spider, you will create bigger spider every time that you add more layers. So remember that the idea with that is check the distance with my airbrush from the model. So it's really close of that. Then paint with a low pressure. You don't have to paint with a really high pressure. When you're priming, maybe for the primer, you have to add a high pressure just to don't uh, choke the, the needle of the airbrush. But later when you have to add many layers with glazing, I recommend you paint closer of your model and with a lower pressure. If you paint, <laughs> Shorter and lower pressure will be better than if you paint far away from the, your model with a low pressure with, or with a high pressure. As much near of the model you are painting, better you will aim and thinner will be the, the area where you are spraying or painting. Now another example is, okay, here I would like to add light for these thunders. I have two options. The first one is add black or the other one is play with color. In my opinion, always at the beginning, you have to play with color, always. Because to, pay, to paint without color, always your miniature will be ready for that moment. So add black, every moment is easy or perfect to add black. However, if you add black, then you want to increase the color, will be really hard. It's better if you have a white color as a background or aluminum, uh, steel, something like this kind of silver color. I think it will be easier work now with color to have different gradients, shades, and then if you don't like them, you can remove them with black. But in my opinion, that color will be fantastic because will be the complementary color of this orange and will work fantastically. And then I'm going to add, as you can see, a bit of violet in this blue to get deeper blue to increase the shadows in the same places where I was painting at the beginning. So the idea now with this violet, and remember, check always before to paint on the paper towel, then start again in the same places where you started, on the shadows, on the armpit, under the biceps, under the shoulder, on the same places where you have painted at the beginning, the same. Because the idea is increase a bit the shadow there without removing the gradient that we painted. 
And with that, you will have different shades. Some of them will have more blue and some of them will have more violet or magenta. Remember that I tried to invite you to paint that model or another one only with airbrush like that at the beginning and then test if you like it or not, paint with copy bases, then paint in that way. The idea is if you paint at the beginning something like that will be perfect for you to know and feel comfortable later with your own project with another one that you have painted everything with copy bases and it's time for the airbrush to add glazing. So you are ready and you feel comfortable and you will do, I think, a fantastic job. So for that, I recommend you just try another model with airbrush at the beginning, check the places where you have to paint, feel the trigger, how you paint it in the places that you want it, if it's okay or not, and then just do it again on the final model with the glazing. So as you see, I think at the beginning it's really difficult to paint with airbrush, it's true, but once time you understand how it works, it's really easy and quick. For sure, I was painting that model for myself, was for my Necron army. I was enjoying a lot with that project and was, I think, fantastic to teach you how to paint with airbrush or what kind of places I've painted with my airbrush. It's a perfect example because everything is silver, it's like a monochromate, and then I'm adding more tonalities just with the airbrush. So I think it's perfect to explain you, and, and this is why here you have the, the project. Here you have the example, just with airbrush. I think now works, but for sure we need work more on that project. Don't worry, because I'm going to paint working on him. Where we have to increase the shadows? Again, if we need to increase the highlighting, we have two, opti two options. The first one is going for the most saturated colors, and the other one is going for something with more value, with more white. Because I choose with super saturated colors, the idea is increase the shadows. In that case, I'm going to increase the shadows exactly with the complementary color, with that blue that I use on, on him. And here you will have the example, how it works. It looks like black, but with a bit of soul inside. And just that, here you have the first video tutorial, and I'm ready to show you in the next one, the next step. I hope you have enjoyed watching that video tutorial, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.